Hello and welcome to another indie game devlog slash tutorial this time. First let's have a quick look at our gameplay footage from before. Last time we implemented some post processing effects like some color grading and a slight bloom effect to make our game much more appealing. In this episode we're going to start adding some particle effects. I plan to at least add effects for running, landing after a jump, kind of a glitter effect for the coins and an effect when we get hit by an enemy. Because that would be a little bit too heavy for one session I will split this up in two parts. Today we will be focusing on swirling up some dirts by running and the glitter effect for the coins. And next time we will do the jump and the effect when we get hit by an enemy. To implement some particle effects to make the game look much cooler was a suggestion from the user Neat Games here on YouTube. I liked this idea pretty much and I decided to go for it because this will step up our visuals a lot. By creating the different particle effects I will explain to you guys step by step what I do and what the different modules and options that I use in the Unity Particle Systems do that will allow you to follow me step by step easily. So this will not be a pure devlog but also kind of a very practically oriented tutorial. If you want to see more videos like this please consider subscribing to my channel and also hit the like button if you like this video. Please also let me know in the comments what you think and if you have any ideas to further improve the game. Alright, enough talking, with not much further to do, let's jump right into Unity and let's get going. Okay, so first we need to do a little bit of a setup to have some stuff we can work with. I would recommend to at least import some basic shapes for our particles. You can either create them by yourself using Photoshop or GIMP, or you could just download a basic particle pack if you're a lazy person like me. I found a really cool one on the website canny.nl, link is in the video description. If you go to assets, then move to the second page, you'll see this particle pack containing 80 different sprites. The cool thing is that it's completely free, you can basically use it in any project, personal or commercial, doesn't matter. Kenny has also a lot of other cool free and paid stuff in very high quality. Please make sure to check them out if you need some stuff for your games. After downloading the archive I just open it up and I just need the PNGs with the black background so I quickly unzip the folder to my desktop. Now let's go back to Unity and let's create a new folder in our Unity project panel for the assets we downloaded. I go to the import folder and I create a new folder for the Kenny assets and inside it I create a folder for our basic particles. And now I just drag and drop the PNGs from our extracted folder on my desktop into my folder on the project panel and we're good to go. Okay, now let's create ourselves a particle system for our dirt splatter particles while running. I just put it into my player object under the model root game object so that it basically uh, moves while the player is moving. I just right click and select effects and then particle system. And this is how a fresh particle system looks by default. Now we need to just tweak some settings to make it behave like we needed to. Let's start by setting up the duration. The first quick advice I can give you is to always take a look at the tooltips when you hover over a label. This will give you a short but in the most cases very precise uh, explanation of the option. In the case of the duration it defines how long one loop is in seconds. I go with one for the start but I will definitely play around with this one later. Also I set the lifetime of a particle to one second so that it lives basically one loop. This will allow us to have a nice emitting going on and we don't get stuck later on because the maximum number of particles are limited. If you for example choose to go with a lifetime which is longer than one loop you will eventually reach the point where you can't spawn new particles until some of them die and you are under the maximum cap again. Next I want to slightly reduce the speed in this case to 3. Um, this is pretty self-explanatory and just defines how fast the particle is moving. Speed and lifetime combined also define how far a particle basically can go. Okay, now let's go to the shape module. This basically defines the shape of our emitter. Since this is a dirt splatter effect, we don't want to get the particles emitted right in the direction of the front of our player, but rather up. So we need to change the rotation. And to make it face up, I just set the X rotation to minus 90 degrees and there we go. Also, I changed the radius of our cone in which the particles get emitted so that it kind of matches the legs of our dog. And I also reduced the angle so that we don't have too much range at the top. Okay, I think we have a pretty decent emission shape right now, but as you might have noticed our particles are way too big for some swirled up dirt, so let's play around with the size next. We of course need to make it much smaller, so let's try about 0.075. As you see there is an arrow right next to the value field, um, you'll see this for many options in the particle system. This basically lets you choose an option type. As you see we can choose if we want our size to be a constant, a curve, a random value between two constants or a random value between two curves. In our case we'll go with a random value between two constants because not every particle has the same size and this will give us a good variation. I just use 0 as the first value and 0.075 as our second value and our particles will be spawned randomly somewhere in between. 
As you see, we have a good variation going on right now. It kind of looks like snowing upwards. I will now test it out really quick to have a look how our intermediate result looks in our actual game. As you see, our main problem is that our particles kind of move with the player after being emitted. They kind of stick to the player position. Um, so let's take care of that next. Um, you can change that if you change the simulation space from local to world. If we now test it out again, you'll see that the single particles are not attached to the player position anymore and just spawned into the world. So now our result looks much more like the one we were going for, but still we have a few adjustments to make. Now let's change the color of our particles next. Since our dog is moving on a road and not on snow, we need to change the color to some sort of a gray. Here we can use a random color between two constants again. I just use the same gray for both values and just change the alpha value so that the transparency is kind of randomized. Let's also change the max particles value. We don't need a thousand dirt particles at a time, so I just uh, set it down to 100. Okay, so far so good. Let's take a look at the renderer module next. Here we can basically define the look of our particles. Remember we imported some basic particle shapes from Kenny and now we're going to use them but first we need to make a few small little changes. So let's go to the folder we imported them in our project panel. I just select them all. I change the texture type from default to sprite. And then we also need to change the alpha source. Because we imported the ones with the black background we need to change the alpha source to from grayscale. Then we just apply our settings and our sprites are good to go. Now, we need to create ourselves a new material. Uh, so I just go to our materials folder and I create a new folder for our particles. Then I create a new material for our dirt particles. As a shader I just choose the particle from the mobile ones and I go for additive. Not sure which one is the right one for our purpose but I guess we'll figure out soon. Then I just select the texture I want to use. In this case I just go with the circle from the Kenny particles. And now we can select our created material in the renderer module of our particle system. So let's quickly do that and check out how it turns out. Um, you see it kind of works, but doesn't apply the colors we chose. So let's change the shader of our material. I guess alpha blended is the right one, at least for this purpose. So let's just go with this one for now. Now I just need to shrink the size down again, which I just increased uh, to see the particles better. Okay, so far so good. Now let's check out how that looks in our game. I think it's pretty cool already, but still there's a lot of stuff to do left. Um, let me adjust our view really quick so that we can see what's going on. I think next we should add some gravity to our particles so that they don't just fly up, but rather behave like having a mass. As you see that looks much more realistic, um, but I will change that down to about 0.7. I guess that looks alright. And now let's have a look at our velocity over lifetime module. That kind of lets you define that uh, the particles get a velocity in a specific direction over time. In our case that's pretty handy because you see when we change the z value of our linear option to a negative, our particles kind of get moved to the back of our player like a normal dirt particle would do. I'll just go with a minus 0.75. Okay and now let's quickly take a look at our gameplay. You see it's behaving more and more realistic. I think it's cool right now, but still we are not done yet. So let's take a look at another module, the emission. Like the name might suggest, this basically defines the emission of our particles, but in our case we can do pretty cool stuff with it. Rather than spawning particles over time, we could also spawn them over distance so that they will just get emitted when the player actually moves, like normal dirt particles typically would do. So let's just try 10 here as a value as well and let's quickly check out how that works. As you see, the particles only get spawned when the player actually moves, um, but something seems off. I feel like the particles don't get spawned constant, so let's quickly double check our settings. Alright, you see, I made a mistake with the max particles option. Um, this should be 100 instead of 10. So let's quickly fix this and check out our gameplay again. Okay, I think they get spawned constantly, but I feel like there are a little bit too many particles getting spawned right now. So we need to adjust our emission. Um, as you see, setting up particles in Unity is a lot of playing around and tweaking the values until you have a good result. Uh, for the rate over distance, I will also go for a random value between two constants to randomize it a little bit. It uh, kind of looked too even in my opinion. So I go for a value between 1 and 3 and let's quickly test it out. Hmm, not quite. I think I will quickly figure it out for myself and put you on fast forward. Okay, so I went for a value between 0 and 1.5. That seems reasonable and uh, realistic to me and this is how our gameplay looks now. I think it's pretty solid for the dirt particles so far. Alright, now, 
Of course, we only want the dirt particles to get spawned if the player actually is on the ground, not when jumping. So we will need to write some code to get that done. I think I just do that in my animation control script, so I quickly open that up in Visual Studio. Um, first we need a reference to our particle system. I just call it dirt particles. Then we need to drag our game object into the slot in our inspector. And now we can access the particle system in our code and we will use the already defined methods uh, we also used for our jump animation. So at the onLand method uh, we will just play our particle system. And at the onJump method we will just pause our particle system. And that should be it. Let's now check out our gameplay again. Let's see if that works. As you see it works properly and our dirt particles only get spawned while running and uh, are not getting emitted when the player is jumping, only when he is touching the ground. So far so good, we are basically done with our first effect on this episode. Let's now go on to the second effect and let's have a look at our coins and let's hook them up with some sort of a glitter effect so that they look much more shiny. And I just drag a coin prefab into my scene so that I can see what's going on while I'm working on it. And I just add a particle system by right clicking, selecting effects and then particle system. And I just rename it to glitter particle. Once again I just change the rotation of our shape module to minus 90 degrees on the x-axis to make them go up and I also move it up a little bit and I change the radius of our cone down a bit. Um, if I think about it we actually don't need a cone but rather a sphere. Now let's have a look. Yeah it seems okay for now. Now if we change our speed down to let's say zero for the particles they wouldn't move at all. To have a nice little glitter effect we will work on a very low speed maybe 0.1 or so. You see, when we now would change down our alpha value, we would have some kind of a smoke effect or so, but we are not aiming for this one. Okay, so now let's create ourselves a new material. I just copy our dirt particle material and rename it to glitter particle. And then I just select a new texture. Let's see what we have here. Maybe the star 6 particle from the Kenny's particle effect would be a good choice, so let's go with this one for now. Now we just need to go to the renderer module of our particle system and select our new material. As you see now stars getting spawned instead of the default round particles. Ok now let's quickly change the color to match our coin. Here we will also go for a random value between two constants to give it some sort of a variation. I will use the same yellow for both values, but I play around with the alpha a little bit to randomize the transparency. Okay, let's have a look um, at the duration of the loop next. Let's start with one here. I also want to randomize the size of the particle, so let's test out a value between 0 and 0 0.5. Okay, and that's basically the base of our glitter effect, and now we just have to play around with the different values, like the speed, duration, lifetime, and our emission shape as well, to get closer and closer to the result we want to achieve. Alright, now let's quickly check out our gameplay. As you see we have some sort of a nice little glitter effect to our coins right now and I think it's looking pretty decent so far. I guess I'll leave it for now. Let's now have a look at another effect uh, for collecting the coins to give the player a little bit of a visual feedback when he collects coins. This will also be some sort of a glitter effect but not in a loop but just played one time when a player collects a coin and it will be much more intense than the default one we just created. To save some time I just duplicate our glitter effect and rename it to collected particle. Now we need to do some changes. First we need to uncheck our loop checkbox to not have it playing as a loop in our particle system anymore. I also need to change the duration and the lifetime to a value I think that might be reasonable but I will need to play around with this even more while tweaking the effect. Now let's hit play and test it out. Ok, I don't want him to move up so I changed the gravity to 0 again. And let's test out some stuff. Maybe I changed the speed to 0. Of course our lifetime should be the duration so I also changed that to 0.5. Um, maybe let's try 0.25. You see it's a lot of testing and tweaking until you come nearer and nearer the result you want to achieve. Let's now have a look at another option in our emission module. Besides emitting particles over time and over distance you can also emit bursts of particles. I think that's the right option for what we want to achieve right here. So let's uh, set everything to zero and add a particle burst of let's say 50 stars. As you see it bursts particles out at once instead of spawning them over time. 
Now let's uh, tweak our speed a little bit maybe and let's see what that does. What you see me doing right now is just testing out some stuff, tweaking the values and checking out how that works. I kind of have a rough idea in mind how our effect should look like, but I need to figure out what looks best and which values I need to set. So I basically just play around with the speed, the size, shape, our duration and lifetime until I get closer and closer to the result I want to achieve. Now that I have some kind of intermediate result, I want to check it out in-game because what matters overall is if the effect is fun to play play and it feels good to collect a coin. So let's take a short break of tweaking the values here and let's write some code to get our effect in the game. First let's go to the prefabs folder in our project panel and I create a new folder for our particles. Then I just drag and drop the particle system from our hierarchy into the folder inside our project panel to make it a prefab and I also delete it from our coin. Now I just need to spawn the prefab and play it whenever the player collects a coin. For that I just go to our player object and I just use the collision controller script of our player which already takes action when collecting coins. First I create a new public variable as a reference to our collected coins uh, particle prefab. Then let's go to our onTrigger enter method and let's just add a line where we instantiate and uh, play our particle prefab and collect a coin. For the y position I add a vector which represents the height of a coin above the ground. As you might remember there are not quite on the ground but rather floating a little bit in the air. And that should be it. Now let's quickly check out our gameplay. Alright, and nothing happens. Good old classic Unity mistake, of course I forgot to drag the prefab into my slot in the inspector. So let's quickly fix that and check out our gameplay again. Yeah, as you see it works now, but let's be honest here guys, it looks pretty crappy. I'm not satisfied with the result right now. So we need to refine our settings even more until we have an appealing result. So let me put you on fast forward really quick and let me play around with the duration, lifetime, rotation, shape, speed and some other values around a little bit until I have some kind of an appealing result. Alright guys, and this is what I got right now. I think it's not too bad overall, but now let's try to change up the speed a little bit and let's see what happens. I think that looks kind of strange and is a different effect like the one I was aiming for, but I kind of like it and has some energy to it and I think it's fun to play. You see, this is the way you do particle effects. You basically play around until you have a result that is matching your vision, but you will also probably stumble across a result that is even better. <laughs> so I decided to just keep it and go for this one. I like it pretty much. Please let me know in the comments if you like the first one more or if you would go with this one as well. Alright guys, and this is about it for the effects we wanted to create in this episode. I will now play around a little bit more with the values and I will try to get the best out of it. Uh, I will put you on fast forward one more time. Let's see if I can improve the effects even more. Alright guys, I'm done. So now, like we do in every video, let's make a quick before and after comparison. So let's now compare our new version with the old version before implementing our particle effects. This was our game at the beginning of the week after we added some post-processing effects. Just take a few seconds and take in the impressions. And now, let's have a look at the current version. We added ourselves some cool looking particle effects for our dog when he is running and also some kind of a glitter effect for our coins when they are being collected or just being idle to make them look much more juicy. What do you think about the progress guys? Please let me know in the comments if you like the effect or if you have an idea to improve things even more. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to see more devlogs with practically oriented tutorial parts like this one, please consider subscribing to my channel and also please make sure to hit the like button if you like this video. With not much further to do guys, I'm out, take care, bye bye.